from the land of tamil nadu a land where the great sangam poet kaniyan poongundran 2000 years ago transcended all the geographical boundaries undeclared yaadu mure yavarum keli meaning the whole world is my home and all human beings are my kith and kin i ascend from the land of social justice and equality wherein the great poet tiruvalluvar transcended even all the divisions in the society 2000 years ago and denounced the water tight varnashrama dharma declared pirappokkum ella uyirkum meaning all are equal by birth i am equally proud to state that i hail from the land of dravidian reformation and tamil cultural renaissance pioneered by iconoclast rebel tandai periyar dravidian demosthenes pereriya ranna founder leader of a party dmk party and muthamil aringa dr kalainger the legendary literary icon and the phenomenal political statesman for whom i am perennially indebted for my political career sir i stand here cherishing the memory of my father late mr tangapandian and i want to place on record my sincere thanks to my party leader talabadi mr mk stalin for whose statesmanship and leadership and his guidance the tamil nadu people have given a solid mandatory support for federalism and secularism for having reports faith this is my maiden speech my maiden this, speech this is your ma- every no, this is your maiden speech my maiden speech for having this, this is your maiden speech faith and trust she's giving me. some introduction for having she's giving allowed me to this, enter this court no she's giving for which her introduction i'm really grateful for him sir please here please bear with her please bear with her okay sir, yes here yes, i am reminded of the dada by navroji who in his maiden speech yes. told that he was the first british member to get elected uh, indian member to get elected for british parliament he said on behalf of india i thank the british people on behalf of a party i thanks the tamil nadu people for their mandate for federalism and secularism this present lok sabha vibrant with 78 mps and i humbly happily share the fa- women mps i humbly happily share the fact that i am the second woman mp to get elected from the south chennai constituency after 28 years a constituency which has been represented by luminaries like anna dravidian ideologist mr uh, thiru murusulli maran a former president r venkatraman and a present dmk uh, party leader respected honorable member tr balu sir i thank my constituency people and i promise them that i shall put my best foot forward at the outset i'd like to congratulate our first full time woman finance minister tirumadi nirmala sitaraman for having presented her maiden budget and i am doubly happy to congratulate her as a tamilachi a tamil woman since she is the daughter of a soil sir i emphasize the honorable president's address honorable prime minister's speech the finance minister's budget and the finance bill a square of mirage a mirage which has given the citizens of the people lots of promises and rosy pictures that all will be well with the vision and mission of 5 trillion economy by 2024-25 during its last stint our honorable prime minister has given a lot of promises that black money would be brought back and generated and uh, 10 crore jobs would be generated and given but the last nothing concrete was done with the unemployment rate of 6.1 trumpeting of a 5 trillion economy by 2024 is a big farce india's major strength lies in its conventional labor driven industry and its development depends majorly on the skilled young manpower but misadventures like uh, demonetization badly handled gst devaluation of rupees have created tremendous unemployment the budget is actually a fudget i would term it as a fudget i tell you why table 2.5 of statistical appendix 
in the volume 2 of the economic survey reveals that actual net tax revenues in 2018-19 were provisionally estimated at rupees 13.16 lakh crores but it is shown an increase of rupees 14.84 lakh crores in the budget that's why i term it as a budget and i term it as a much ado about nothing budget so coming to the discussion on the finance bill i'm reminded again here of the dada by nauroji he has given a very famous speech titled as india must be blessed b l e d a title which he borrowed from lord salisbury i quote as india must be blessed these words were delivered by a secretary of state state for india lord salisbury himself let's clearly understand what is meant by bleeding a nation it is perfectly true that when there is a government people must pay taxes but there is a great difference between taxing people and bleeding people unquote so through you i'd like to ask the government you waive tax for corporates you disinvest public sectors you neither rebate tax for middle class nor for common people nor waive former loan but increase the tax thereby escalating petrol and diesel prices doesn't it make india bleed all the more if you still believe in what gandhi ji told that the crux of the nation lies in the welfare of the farmers just giving them rupees 6000 a pittance amount leave alone leaving them in the lurch of the debts and all those things uh, it is just a pittance amount sir with greatest grouse i record here that the tamil nadu people still they have this grouse that our honorable prime minister had not visited the gaja cyclone hit areas turning a cold shoulder to it exactly so the gold price increase in it is it not making the country bleed if you believe in what you professor profess the finance minister has told that there will be a shift from women centric to women led like india if that is true then the import duty on gold is hiked from 10% to 12.5 which would directly hit the middle class indian women because even now the savings of the indian household is in gold and for a uh, under underprivileged section of women for a woman working class woman even making a mangal sutra in gold has become a far fetched dream now doesn't it make india bleed all the more so the finance bill which if i may use the term is a poor cousin of the budget since it parrots the policies of the government a pro corporate and a anti anti common man government with a thrust on disinvestment disinvestment which makes india bleed all the more so they say the destiny of the nation lies in the way it treats its children women on the privileged section and the physically challenged people writers artists and above all the minorities but lynching and poaching doesn't it make india bleed all the more and as a vernacular poet i can see and sense disappointment and despair plurality regionality diversity pluralism secularism everything have been tamed into one sloganeering of one nation one election one ration card and now one grid sir yes robert walpole i have time time sir i am the only member only speaking member. only member in dmk i do have time sir robert walpole later earl of hartford when he spoke on the house of lords bill 1719 made this observation i quote among the romans the wisest people upon earth the temple of fame was placed behind the temple of virtue to denote that there was no coming to the temple of fame but through that of virtue unquote if this scenario continues our virtues will be lost and india will bleed all the more i have a few queries to be asked through you sir my south chennai constituency comprises a lot of fishermen populace till today agriculture fishery and farming are not treated as industries in the real sense of the term besides the fact that they are designed to bear the brutal brunt of natural calamities like cyclone tsunami and depletion of resources the honorable finance minister has announced matchiya sampada yojana as part of blue revolution with an aim to bring all fishermen under the umbrella of all former welfare programs and ushers to promote aquaculture through an easy access to credit i quote from money control news a special fisheries of aqua and aquaculture infrastructure development fund of rupees 
7,522 has been allotted last year, but this fund will be used to attract private investment in creation and management of fisheries, infrastructure, facilities and coast. Sir, how would you expect an ordinary fisherman, son of the sea, who sets out to the sea every day and makes his living in that with nil investment? Please come Sir, on. I have time. No, no. Five you are allotted time. Sir, five more minutes. Yours. Please, sir, I ah, have yeah. time. Five more yeah. minutes. Five yes. more minutes, sir. No, no. It is my maiden speech and I am That's the why one you are given more time. Sir. Please, sir. That's why we are given more time. You can, you can come to development. Yes. Yes, sir. Fast. When you have given so much time for them, it is so ten minutes. Your party sir, has allotted ten minutes. Not you already taken. This is for the indigenous fishermen. This is for the macro fishing industry magnet. And private investment is the key word here. Chennai's largest IT hub is in my constituency. In the era of technological advancement, the paradigm shift is now on the artificial intelligence. I would like to ask, what are the steps taken to sensitize this industry towards the opportunities that will open up due to 5G spectrum? Yes. Sir, Tinagar and Mailapur, two important cluster areas which comes in the, my parliamentary constituency are areas of MSME. The finance minister has just reiterated the sanctioning of loans up to 1 crore in 59 minutes for GST approved SME units. Sir, I appreciate it, but the bankers are wary of dispersing the loans accordingly. Could the government furnish any data of number of loans actually distributed through this uh, uh, scheme? Sir, there are major amendments in income tax, other direct taxes domain, indirect taxes, GST, etc. Uh, individual spending more than 2 lakh on foreign travel. The insertion of the provisos in section 139 makes them, these following, the individual spending more than rupees 2 lakhs on foreign travel a year, individual spending more than rupees 1 lakh on electricity in a year to 5 ATRs. How is it possible, sir? Because uh, uh, this is a country wherein the joint family system is still prevalent. How would they, with a large many number of members, limit their electricity expenses within 1 lakh a year? Sir, there is a Tamil poem from Sangam literature, not tonight. Maramsa marundum kollar mandar, uramsa chayar uyardavam, valam geda ponnum kollar mandar, nannudal, naam tamurumayin ulame. Generally, men of great stature won't strip off the medicinal plants to that extreme of letting it to perish. They won't do penance at the cost of prowess to become weak. Yes. Similarly, a good-natured king won't burden his citizens with heavy taxes, leading them to poverty. This world survives. Since men of such stature never falter. So last, last point, only yes. last two yes. points. Yes. I have, yes, last point, sir. Yes. Sir, with anguish and pain, I want to draw the attention of the Honorable Minister through you, the allocation of rupees 50 crores to appoint Hindi teachers to the non-Hindi speaking state, which is a clear design to promote the three language formula, a pet theme of this government. Here I want to emphatically state that our DMK party and our leader, Talabadi, Mr. Stalin, upholds only the two-language formula. I would like to remind the statement yes. of our party founder leader, Pereringer Anna, in this. I quote, I have authorized no. three legislative laws. Last sentence, sir. I have authorized three legislative laws in Tamil Nadu State Assembly as its chief minister. These are the words of Pereringer Anna. Renaming the Madras State as Tamil Nadu. Endorsing legal sanctity to marriages without religious customs and rituals and adhering only to the two-language formula. And no one can dare either to scrap or to change these Thank laws. You. I would like to conclude with the lines of Shelley. Sir, he said, I fall upon the thorns of life, I bleed. The budget, the fudget, make India bleed all the more. Thank you very much. Thank you.